welcome to My Moon Time. In this recording, we do have some adult language. You may choose to want to listen with your headphones on. If so, now's the time. Welcome, I'm Dana Michelle Gillespie, creator of My Moon Time, My Moon Time app, My Moon Time podcast, which you are listening to. I have Jane Bennett with us here today. And I'm really excited because she is a mentor of mine. And I think one of the biggest assets we have on really earth right now for female wellness, female uh, natural fertility. And so uh, I'm just happy to have you here, Jane, and hopefully have more people that maybe don't know about you because you have written so many amazing books. um, And if they don't, they have a great opportunity to get to know you. A little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and read off your amazing um, bio because there's so many things you've done. I don't want to miss anything. Uh, so Jane Bennett is the founder of the Chalice Foundation and a social worker, researcher, writer, and educator with nearly 40 years in practice. Um, after experiencing the revelations of natural fertility management in the mid 1980s, Jane began working as a natural fertility management counselor and then trainer and later authoring the natural fertility management kits with Francesca Nish. Jane launched Celebration Day for Girls in 2000 and Cool on the Inside in 2002, Fathers Celebrating Daughters in 2014 and Menses Ed in 2016. Jane co-authored the Right Journeys, Right Journey Girls Year Nine program and continues her longstanding role with natural fertility management. Jane is the author of A Blessing, Not a Curse and Girltopia and co-authored About Bloody Time, The Menstrual Revolution We Have to Have, as well as Woman Wise Conversation Cards and The Complete Guide to Optimum Conception, the Natural Fertility Management Contraception Kit, and the book, The Pill, Are You Sure It's For You? And is eternally passionate about nourishing healthy curiosity and best practice self-care for women and girls. She also helped create my NFM charting app, which I recommend to everyone. So <laughs> yay, I'm happy to have you here, Jane. And uh, if I missed anything or something to add to of your bio, please, uh, add to it but thank you for being here thank you donna it's a it's a real delight to be with you (laughs) oh thank you um so for people getting to know you for the first time i would love to ask a little bit how you got really kind of got into this holistic or natural fertility management or natural fertility world a little bit more sure well (laughs) like Like most things and for most people, it really began with my own journey. I had had probably a fairly classic journey for a heterosexual with contraception from my late teens. I'd been on the pill a couple of times, uh, which, you know, just didn't sit well with me. I didn't feel myself and and really kind of wanted to to let that go. Uh, After that, I tried an IUD, uh, which worked, but... It worked until it didn't, <laughs> uh, let's say. And, uh, and also it was very painful. I, I, for the first time, I'd had very painful and, and much heavier periods. So that didn't feel great. Then a friend recommended a diaphragm to me. And I loved my diaphragm. <laughs> uh, it was really great because I could use it when I needed it. And then when I didn't, I had nothing. Uh, I had no chemicals, no devices inside me so you know that felt really good then in my mid-20s or around 24 um, I learned about the work of Francesca Nash who calls her program natural fertility management and in the 70s she had really studied up what was available uh, as methods for understanding when she was fertile and when she wasn't for herself Uh, and she combined these methods Uh, And from around uh, 1977, she began offering that to women and couples so that they could know for themselves uh, when they were fertile and when they weren't and then make decisions accordingly. 
So whether they wanted to conceive or didn't want to conceive. So I came across her and her work in Sydney in the mid seventies and uh, thought, this is amazing. I'm really interested, but funnily enough, it still took me a couple of years to make an appointment. And I have to say a new boyfriend who said, yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's do this together. <laughs> it's great. You know, all power to him. Um, so uh, we went along. In those days, it was audio tapes and Ronio sheets, uh, you know, and pencil and paper. And I went home from that appointment and started charting my cycle, checking uh, cervical mucus, taking my temperature, noting down other symptoms like uh, food cravings or headaches or, um, uh, you know, when I bled and so on, on, on charts. And I found quite quickly I mean I was really fascinated by the process so it was an exciting journey and I found quite quickly I could quite quickly go okay well I'm I'm really confident for that little window of time I'm not fertile uh, and as the months you know a few months along that window became larger as I really became very clear about what I was seeing you know, what my body was telling me about ovulation. And really that's based on, because I can't see right in to my ovary and see exactly what's happening there, but it's based on, you know, understanding what the uh, very uh, dramatic shifts in hormones are, the, the, the other symptoms that that's creating in my body. And, and therefore I could read those. Um, so that was, you know, I was excited about that. And of course, we then become very clear about, okay, that time is fertile, or there might be other days where I think, well, I'm not sure if I'm fertile or not. So of course, you know, for contraception, we would use uh, protection during those days or other practices. So, um, uh, you know, that was wonderful. And, you know, and, uh, in a way enough as it was, and, and it really was a wonderful contribution to our sexual relationship as well. Uh, it, was, it was embracing all of um, my and our fertility rather than sort of saying, well, that part we don't want and, and this part, you know, is good and that part's bad. It was actually all of it was of a one and all of it was included in our sexual expression. So that was um, emotionally and practically really fantastic. However, what also happened is that uh, that useful information and, you know, very useful way of reading my body for, for that very uh, important um, practice of, of contraception became a side benefit. And the real benefit for me became knowing where I was in my cycle. Okay, you know, it's, I'm, I'm day 10, what I, you know, typically what I experience on day 10 is, is this, or I'm day 26, typically what I experience is this. So, and it, which helped me enormously with some symptoms, troubling symptoms I'd had, and I could pinpoint where that was, what was happening hormonally. And it allowed me in a, in a much more targeted way to support my health and well-being. And really just my emotional and psychological and spiritual state as well to know where I was in that pattern, you know, really became a, a, an incredible benefit for, for the rest of my cycling years. That's so cool. Very, very cool. I loved what you just shared about the, your relationship and that kind of very holistic piece of all of this is so, um, refreshing and kind of inspirational again. <laughs> I'm always inspired by you. <laughs> um, for those also listening, um, Francesca Nash and um, Jane, their work is really kind of the foundation of a lot of my moon time app. And my moon time app is more designed to kind of help you check in in a more, um, I would say, emotional aspect of where you're at on your cycle and for people that want to go like really fine-tune go download their app because it's going to help you get really precise in there but you know so much of the information that I share with my moon time app and the you know the basic you know formulations is from all the work you guys have developed for I mean pretty much I they would say 50 years in practice more than 40 years really um, but it's 
absolutely incredible. And I'm just so grateful for you guys. Like <laughs> everyone listening needs to go check out your website. There's so many things on there that is so um, useful and fascinating. And I know we talked earlier about this, but I will continue to go back to, cause it's something that keeps just setting in my mind of um, with epigenetics and with your constant, what is it? Um, natural fertility guide for, how do I say it? The um, the natural fertility management conception kit and yes. um that one where it it's a big kit and you go into it and it has so much detail about what to do i think it's four months prior to conception for both partners and you know every little nuance from healthy water and certain things to eat and all the stuff for your life but how that can not just help your child your you know unborn but soon to be born child um be born healthy and, but have all these, you know, different markers of real lasting health. And then not just your child, but your grandchild. And I love that. I'm like, okay, I hope more people can hear this and get with you guys to have this information. Cause that's, that's huge, huge. Mm, uh, it is. And, and epigenetics is so exciting because it gives, it does give us the power uh, before we conceive <clears throat> through through lifestyle, through diet, through, you know, just in, in some ways, it's just general healthy stuff. But if we have particular conditions or particular fertility challenges, the, uh, the conception guide uh, really uh, delves down into what you specifically can do um, about those to really elevate your, um, your general health, but also your reproductive health, and therefore what you're going to pass on genetically, as you say, for, for several generations. It is incredibly cool. And really, when we know this, and within our capacity and within, within our means, why wouldn't, we, why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we give that gift to our own children, to our grandchildren, to our great grandchildren, uh, to to help them um, be, have, be as healthy uh, as possible. Yeah, I think it was maybe a little video you guys have on the website of with Fran Francesca talking about this a little bit, and she was even speaking to certain minerals and supplements, herbs, what not to take. So even just the child, you know, can not only grow healthy, but like have just not have like, you know, I think she was talking about like um, common baby things that are not easy to deal with, like um, colicky, colicky, I think was one of them, you know, all these just fussy, crying, not feeling good. I'm like, oh my God, wait, what? There's things that people can take to help prevent all that. That's, I think that's prices alone. So, cause it's so hard for um, parents, young or parents who have a young infant and child to feel rested and awake so they can actually bond with their child, but also be awake to take care of it safely and stuff. And when a little infant may, you know, have um, not feel good, be fussy or whatnot, that's extra stress on the parents. And if that's something that we can hopefully maybe take some extra minerals or whatnot during uh, or pre-pregnancy and prevent that. I mean, that sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. why, why wouldn't we make it as easy as possible for ourselves and our child? Exactly. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's quite, you know, this, these ideas of preconception healthcare are starting to take on, you know, to take off more. Um, but it's it's been a long time. We've just thought, well, you know, eggs are so tiny and sperm are so tiny, you know, as long as it works, it's all fine. Uh, but quality, you know, the quality of the egg and the quality of the sperm really truly does make a difference. Uh, on the website, which is fertility.com.au, uh, under the success page, there's a lot of information about research that's been done into this and why uh, we need the, the four months. Um, an egg from an immature egg or all the way through to ovulation uh, takes 100 days and sperm generation takes a little more than that. Uh, so this, this is the critical time for really making sure the health of those is really optimum. So in the, um, the optimum, uh, the, sorry, the complete guide to optimum health that we have on the website, um, we do uh, talk about 
you know, optimum diet and, and what we need in terms of minerals and vitamins. We don't suggest uh, particular herbs or treatment because we feel that it's really important for people to see their local practitioner uh, so that they're getting a very personalized treatment. Because if you have any particular conditions that you're trying to treat alongside, you know, you, you really need to see someone uh, specifically. But it does talk about why we need to be uh, at optimum nutrition for men and women at the at the time of conception, and you know the the incredible differences this can make uh, for as uh, as we said for uh, for the baby and the baby's health for the pregnancy uh, and birth and bonding time afterwards. Um, so you know it does really support that whole journey um, extraordinarily. That's cool. Um, or they could just fly in to you guys in Sydney and book sessions one on one. <laughs> well, we're just about opening our borders if you get a visa. <laughs> so you can try. <laughs> I have so many friends in Australia. Like I haven't really, because it hasn't, you know, it doesn't register because people just fly back and forth from the US to, you know, Australia for X, Y, and Z that I'm like, oh, yeah. You have to actually have like a, you're working their citizenship right now still. Yeah. But soon, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> However, that said, Francesca is offering online, um, oh. online sessions for people. So that's, yeah. that's certainly possible. And especially, I mean, she was a little bit before the pandemic, but, uh, you know, especially now, you know, that's, that's pretty much how she's seeing everybody, um, uh, which has opened it up much more for people, you know, traveling or people who can't travel uh, from anywhere in the world. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, with you talking about the studies on your website, one of the studies I love that you guys have listed um, under the uh, My NFM, is it My NFM app? My NFM yep. app, turning My up. Um, the piece you have, and I think it's what um, if some research study has, they studied like over 2,000 different um, fertility apps that are on the market right now. And they only found 16% accurate, which makes total sense to me. I'm just like, but I don't think mm -hmm. people understand. I just ran into a girlfriend recently. It was like, oh yeah, I, uh, I was using, she didn't tell me which one, but I was, she was using, I think a period tracker app, which do not use for fertility charting in my opinion. Um, and they got, they got pregnant with their child because it didn't, wasn't able to really be accurate. No. No, it, I really recommend people look into those very carefully. And, and there are a small, I think it's less than 16%. I think it's about, you know, I should know, I put it on the website, but I, I think it's only about 20 altogether out of that over. Yeah, it was, I think it's, if I said 16%, it meant 16 actual apps itself. Were, oh, yes, yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's about that. Sorry, uh, I misunderstood. And um yeah, so it's it's a it's a very small percentage that are that have were found to be accurate and and useful, and we in in my NFM app, what we get people to do is is their charting and and uh, you know so they can they can put put the information in on on charts and we support them in how to interpret those charts, but we do not interpret them for them. So we're not saying, okay, this means you're, you know, you've ovulated here, you're fertile here, blah, 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 which is possible and, uh, you know, can be done. It's complicated because everyone's different and we're putting together, you know, different, um, even though there are, there are sort of familiar patterns, um, you know, depending on people's health and their conditions, you know, there can be different patterns of mucus and temperature and, and so on and so forth. So uh, what we decided in the end was we would support you to be able to read and interpret your own charts uh, so that ultimately you could be, you know, living remotely out in the desert or on Antarctica and, you know, all the internet goes down for months <laughs> if you even have any and you would still know when you're fertile and when you're not. So that's, uh, we, we think that's real empowerment. And, you know, contrary to some of the information uh, you will see from, you know, 
various organizations who don't really understand fertility awareness. It's not hard. It's not hard and it doesn't take a lot of time. It's not complicated. Once it's, it's the sort of um, learning, once you've got it, you've got it for life then. And uh, if you have any time where you're not sure, you know, say if you're using the, the method for contraception, if you're not sure or you haven't needed it for a while and you're in a new relationship and you're not sure, well, then you use protection and you just, and you then just, you know, practice up your skills. Uh, again, it's, uh, it, it, it's not that complicated. And um, what I found and what we hear from many uh, women and couples who are learning these methods is that, you know, you're so, it's so interesting at the beginning that you don't mind, you know, you're doing some reading and you're spending a few minutes a day charting. You know, that's, that's it. So, you know, the reading can take whatever time, whatever time it takes, but it helps you understand what you're seeing on your charts. And for me, and as I said, for so many that I've spoken to, that is no effort because it's so damn interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. I love that. Yeah, I think, yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there and me looking at apps and the future of apps and I'm not, I'm not excited anymore about the future of period tracking apps and fertility apps because um, I continually find um, not only if the app itself wasn't programmed correctly or with every new smartphone that comes out, just because you have programmed your app for Apple, it doesn't mean every single Apple version uh, iPhone it will work for or with, without bugs. Um, and that's not even talk about Google Play. It's like, oh my God, because there's so many different uh, smartphones that can work under the Google Play umbrella. Um, and then you have user interface and a lot of people, you know, they get busy and they forget or they somehow think that the app knows more about their body than they do. And it's like, oh no, no, this is just based on basic algorithms. We don't even know what algorithms are using um, on your past data. And sometimes these apps, they'll want you to, they need you to constantly be putting in for information to make it more accurate. And if you don't, then it's so it's like, I keep looking at the future and that's just one piece of those apps that I'm like, oh God, there's a lot of other components that I'm not loving seeing what's moving forward with that, but oh, well, <laughs> we yeah. do the best we can. Well, there's look some apps out there that like yours that are great, you know? Exactly, and yours too, Dana, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, and and I, I just to just to add a little bit to that, you know, I, I do know a lot of women who have found using period trackers has helped them for the first time tune in, you know, to their to their cycle. Um, so even the one, you know, but as you say, not to rely on them for fertility awareness is really important. Uh, but, you know, if, if it means you're noticing and putting into the, into the app, you know, where you're at in your cycle, how you're feeling, what's going on, you know, I think there's, I think there's definitely benefit there. Um, uh, but I will say that, and I certainly haven't looked at the well over a thousand <laughs> uh, and probably more all the time, you know, apps that are, that are out there in, in this, in this field, but um, that, the majority are really heavy on promotion, heavy on how fabulous they are, and really light on content. You know, it might be lots of rah, 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 and actually, oh, it's the rhythm method. Oh, oh, it's the temperature method, and you've got to pay hundreds of dollars for, you know, a thermometer that's going to talk to your phone. Um, when really, you know, you can do it a lot more, a lot more simply and, and in a way that will be a lot easier to understand. For yourself. I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, those are so many, so many useful things to remember and keep in mind. Um, but I'm also hopeful, like I, I completely agree with what you said. I have gotten a slew of messages, beautiful message and emails from females being like, oh my God, your app, my moon time has helped me feel just like better to connect into myself and my cycle. So I'm deeply, you know, grateful for that. Cause that was one of the biggest goals of my moon time app was to help women feel, you know, connected to themselves and to know that their own empowerment and truth and beauty and wholeness, no matter what's going on in their life. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. Um, 
I think I know the answer to this, but on your charting app, you have the moon on there, right? The moon faces, because that's a big thing people ask for. The moon, okay, cool. So they have the moon faces on there too. Yes, I'll, I'll just qualify that a little bit. So when people get our app, sometimes, you know, you, you are able to purchase it just as the app, or uh, it comes with the complete guide to optimum conception, or the natural fertility management uh, contraception kit. So it, it comes automatically with those. Um, and you get a link to, to it. So um, what we used to do is the, uh, the, the lunar calculations used to be part of every kit or guide. And uh, whereas when we did the new uh, conception guide, what we had found over the years is some people absolutely love that connection and love, and it really makes a lot of sense to them, that, uh, that connection and that understanding of the moon and their fertility. And for some people, it leaves them completely cold. So uh, we decided we would make it an option. So with the conception guide, uh, the lunar calculations are an option. So when they go in and start charting a new cycle in my NFM, they can tick a box that says, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm including the lunar option, or if they're not, they don't tick that and it doesn't come up. Uh, with the current natural fertility management contraception kit, uh, the lunar calculations, the personal lunar calculations, so they, they, can, they get their own, uh, comes with all of those kits. So you would, you would then still need to tick the box, but then there's somewhere to, somewhere to put all that. Cool. That's very Thank cool. And, um, for everyone listening, um, the moon phases on this app we're talking about is actually more, it gives you the ability to look at some real cool biological aspects of the moon, not just affirmations or like on my moon time, I put more potential energy awareness that day, how the day may feel your perception of, you know, if it's a full moon, you might, <laughs> might be a little bright, might feel a little uh, emotional. This in this app um, that we're speaking to right now is about um, the natal lunar fertility timer, also known as biorhythmic fertility time has a long history. And then you two, Jane, you and Francesca, um, wrote and have a, an amazing book that's now for free on your website called Lun I think it's called Lunar Fertility Guide. Yeah, which is awesome. So everyone go check out that book too. Um, and it goes in the nuance deep, deep, all about all this. And I think another piece that's so great about that book when I was reading it was how much data you have. Because you guys have like 50 years of actually hands-on working with women, not thinking about things and writing postulates, like real women, real results, real data. And I love that. And you have it in this book. So it's another useful treasure. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so just to be, just to be really clear for people going to the website, the free ebook that really explains all of, all about lunar fertility that you were just talking about. Uh, so that's called lunar fertility. And then, then the calculations are a separate uh, product, a separate item on the website. And that's called Lunar Fertility Instructions and Calculations. And there is a price on that. So um, I suggest people just get the ebook to start with and have a look. And then if they want to go on and get the other, they can. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um... I want to ask or talk a little bit about um, the Chalice Foundation and um, all the work you're doing with women. And I think it's Celebration Day um, for girls or ask you more about that, I should say. Sure. Um, so the Chalice Foundation is a not-for-profit uh, foundation that I founded in 2017. And the purpose was really, I mean, I had been doing uh, work with uh, mothers and daughters for many years and fathers of daughters and schools around menstrual education um, and various other, various other sort of entities. And I wanted to sort of create a foundation as an umbrella for, for all of this. 
And uh, as you do when these things happen, when you create these things, they, they then have their own life. So we have we now have a, um, a blog on the website. It's chalicefoundation.org is the, is, the, is the website. So we have a blog called The Leak uh, on there with lots of different, uh, you know, people, people uh, writing from academia, from personal experience, from their experience of uh, menstrual difficulties, from the experience of perimenopause and menopause, uh, workplace culture, all, you know, really all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice place to go and browse and, and see what, uh, what speaks to you. So um, programs like Celebration Day for Girls, which I started in 2000, uh, for girls uh, 10 to 12 and their mother or female carer, and that's now, in 2012, I started training other women to run that program. It started, like all these things, it started from, uh, it's, it, it grew out of my work with natural fertility management because for a number of years, we'd had uh, women saying, well, look, this is so great for us learning about our bodies and our cycles and our fertility. Where are the resources for our daughters? You know, they, they'd had having children and they were growing up and I said, well, what, can, what do we have? So I was looking around and looking around and, oh, I've got to do something here. So I wrote the book, A Blessing, Not a Curse, that you mentioned earlier that came out in 2002. And I started running workshops uh, for mothers and daughters in 2000 and have, re have been doing that. So what are we, you know, 20, 2022? uh for quite some time and in 2012 I started training other women to run this program and and now we have eight trainers uh around the world as well uh so at current count uh celebration day for girls is available in 27 countries uh and obviously several several different languages mostly in English but also uh French Italian German uh Spanish Dutch uh Flemish same thing. Um, I'm sorry, I probably missed something, but <laughs> oh, Danish. <laughs> uh, so, um, so that's really exciting. And we find we're, we're very open to adapting that program to local cultural needs. And, uh, but facilitators have been telling us there's very little that they need to change because it is such a universal experience. And, uh, and that's really, that's really gratifying. So this is, to me, you know, uh, well, I have a, a, around that time, around 2000, you know, my daughter was uh, growing up and going through puberty as well. And so it really made, you know, it was all around me, <laughs> her and her friends. And, uh, and it was like, you know, why would we pass this on? Why would we pass menstruation on as a curse? You know, none of us are born with that understanding. Why? you know, just through being unconscious, just through not knowing how to talk about it or through generationally, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, just not having the language or keeping silent or, or keeping it so private that we feel isolated. Uh, why would we do that to our girls? So I, that's why I really wanted to bring it back to that age group. And while we don't talk there about, you know, natural fertility management as such, uh, we give them much more sort of information and understanding. We have fun, we have stories and we have do craft and we have games and so on that all uh, relate to, you know, to, to, to this uh, really ubiquitous experience. Once we start cycling, except for times of pregnancy um, and, and, um, and postnatal uh, amenorrhea, we're, psych we're somewhere in our cycle for 35 to 40 years, unless, of course, we've switched it off or had, had um, you know, surgery or, or surgical um, uh, menopause, uh, unless it's switched off. So, you know, we really need to understand, to be able to self-care, to understand our fertility, to understand our cyclic life is so empowering. And to give girls a beginning that is positive it's connected to other people they feel by the end of the, the day they feel really comfortable talking about periods with other girls with other women um, and and feel proud of their developing bodies uh, and therefore we try to set them up so that they have you know they're 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 likely to be finding people who can help them 
in a, in a positive approach. They're, they'll be sharing with each other. They'll be confident about uh, self-care and seeking knowledge and information and support as they need it. Um, and much more, in a, in a much more positive way, tuned into their, to their body and, and therefore able to make um, healthy choices in relationships later on. Uh, because when we're, we're, we're really heading off a sense of shame or a sense of dirtiness that is often uh, imbibed by girls still these days um, in many parts of the world, that there's something really wrong and dirty and shameful uh, about our vulva, about our vagina, about uh, menstrual bleeding, when, when this nothing could be more natural and, um, and, and healthy. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> I'm still like, I didn't for some reason really fully understand or that it was in so many countries. I'm like, I want to go. <laughs> this sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um wanted to ask you uh also uh is there anything you've i mean you've already shared so many little pieces of amazingness and things you love but is there anything in particular that you witnessed through this work like little something that stands out that you just absolutely loved or were inspired by or anything also mm -hmm. too like is anything sparking joy for you right now in this work that is just kind of um extra special for you well it's, it's a it's a really hard question Dana, because so much does and i what comes to mind is a couple of stories that i you know just have from the last week so one of our facilitators uh in melbourne shared uh, this experience with me and she had run a celebration day for girls uh late last year uh for mothers and their daughters in, in her local area. And, you know, she had a knock on her door in the middle of the day, recent last week, and that one of the mothers and daughters was standing there and they were really excited and they wanted to come and tell her. Uh, and the girl uh, shared the news that her, she, her first period had arrived. And so they were able to have this, you know, very sweet conversation and congratulations and how are you feeling and, you know, so on and so forth. And um, so not only did that girl feel positive about this and, and sharing that with her mum, but she wanted to come and share that with the facilitator as well. So, um, you know, that was very sweet. And we do get many, you know, all kinds of different stories from facilitators uh, of, of the transformation. One of the things that we get very often from mothers is uh, because, of course, they they sign up for this workshop for their for their daughters because they really want and some want to give them something positive sometimes because they don't they're not sure how to talk about it they don't know how to uh, help that be uh, a positive experience uh, and sometimes they've they've shared shared a lot uh, but still want the celebration of it and the and the sharing with a group uh, of of that experience but very often at the end of the day we do have a separate mother's session so there's time for just adults to to talk about the day itself, what's what's going to be happening, but also to support mums in their role as their daughters uh, pass through puberty and start to have a menstrual cycle and so on, um, in whatever ways work for them. So very often at the end of the workshop, we have mothers saying, oh, I didn't realise this was for me too, you know, that this was really uh, quite um, revolutionary and really feeling, I wish I'd had this. I wish I'd had this many years ago, this understanding um, or, or this, this kind of thing exactly <laughs> for myself. So, so, you know, each workshop that we run, each workshop and each mother and daughter that comes along uh, with a facilitator, we feel like we're really offering them something quite transformative that will, we'll, so even though it's just a day, uh, it's in the general course of things, even, relative to school uh, education around periods um, and reproduction, 
it's it's very it adds it's a lot more than that and it, and it's and it's very positive so um even though it's just a day we feel like we're really you know every every person that comes we're really changing the culture um and certainly for them and and it ripples out from from them as well so that was one story if, if have we got time for another one yes please <laughs> um and and really i could tell you stories from every facilitator that's offering this workshop because you know they uh, i hear so many wonderful reports but i i just want to share one we have a a, a facilitator who has started offering workshops in colombia in rural colombia uh, and in this case, these are these are free to participants because these are uh, areas where people don't have any disposable income. And recently, she and her uh, assistant, her her volunteer supporter, so that they were invited to go to an area that's not even really a village; it's just a, an agricultural area that's very remote. <clears throat> so they, from where they are, which is outside the city, it's in a mountain area in Colombia. Uh, they drove for two hours and then had donkeys for two hours uh, to get to where they were running this running this workshop. Um, and each, you know, and of course this was this was in Spanish. Um, and each workshop, each group is in in such a, a different area. And you're really looking to what are the needs here. I mean, we have a program, of course, but then different needs will arise according to, uh, you know, what that, what that community, what those individuals and what that community needs. So I, I won't go into all the details about that particular workshop, but, um, you know, it was very moving and everywhere that they are going. So they've run four now in, you know, this wider area in, in rural Colombia. And they're getting invited back with with spades, and other areas are, are asking for their help. So, you know, we're starting to put together a, um, a funding program to help support them to do that because they're doing that voluntarily. Um, so that's it's really exciting, and we feel like that's making considerable difference for the girls and the mums. Many of the mums who are you know married with children you know, the, the questions they're asking are really indicating, you know, that they have had very little education around their own bodies and how they work, how reproduction works um, and so on. So um, you know, we, we're excited about that too. <laughs> That's really cool. I love that. I love that. Um, well, I don't want to take up all of your day because I know how amazing you are and how many things you have to do and clients I'm sure to see, but I wanted to ask a little bit more if people um, want to connect with you or read some of your books um, to what is the best like website to go check out some of these um, products and books and whatnot so they can, you know, learn more and hopefully connect with you and all that good stuff. Sure. Well, uh, the best website for natural fertility management, whether it's around uh, conception or contraception or any fertility issues, is fertility.com.au. So just go there, have a, have a browse around, and uh, you can contact us from there as well if you have further questions. Um, for the Chalice Foundation, it's chalicefoundation, as it sounds, .org. And there's lots of very interesting stuff there. There's the leak, there's, you know, um, information on workshops, uh, free resources and so on. And then for Celebration Day for Girls, it's, as it sounds, celebrationdayforgirls.com.au. Uh, so that's particularly around, around that program. Uh, and there is information. We do have some online programs now, you know, thanks to the pandemic <laughs> uh, that people can attend. Uh, we have programs for fathers of daughters and we have facilitator training. So if anyone's feeling, you know, wow, I really like to be able to offer that workshop, uh, go to that website, have a look at the training page and get in touch with us. There are applications, application forms there if you're interested. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Jane, for 
being here today with me and with us. And I am so grateful for you always and all the work you do. And I hope more people get to connect up with you. I mean, I, I read, I think the first book I read of yours was The Pill, Are You Sure It's For You back in 2010, 2009. And it was so good for me. I love that book. And um, kept on reading, kept on reading, got all of Francesca's books and your books and stuff. And um, it's made a huge impact on my life. It helped, it really helped shape so much of my moon time app. So I want to thank you and thank you for being here today. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, pl absolute pleasure, Dana. And, and, you know, it's been great speaking to you and, and we, we uh, very often recommend your work as well you know so because you're just doing such great work and reaching so many people and helping them understand you know their their own natural cycles and and the empowerment of that is uh, is just fantastic so thank yeah. you to <laughs> thank you i mean i guess the more of us all that can do this and help each other um it's helping each other and everyone just have a more empowered empowered life and that's really it right <laughs> healthy Absolutely. joyful totally yeah totally mm. well thank you thank you and i'm sure i'll be connecting up with you soon as i tend to email you often <laughs> <laughs> you're very you're very welcome you're very welcome we will say goodbye for now <laughs>